Hey guys, so I wanted to do a tutorial today using the Wet n Wild Glitter Single in Nude Comer. I know with these glitter eyeshadows that um, if you've ever tried them in the past, it has really chunky glitter that doesn't blend that well or adhere in the right places. It can look patchy, but they've reformulated them and I bought the one in Nude Comer. I can't speak for any of the ones in the line other than this one, but I really love this and if you wanted to give it another chance, they're only like 99 cents. So I just wanted to show you how I use this and what I use it with to make it work the way I want it to. Uh, I know that at least one of you had left a comment saying that the other colors in the line do not perform like this one does, but like I said, I haven't tried the others so I can't really say. So let me give you a better look at this. So it's, I would say this is a gold, and it's in a like jelly base. It's basically gold glitter in a jelly base, but I don't know, I used it one day and I really really enjoyed it. Now I have already applied a bunch of products to my face because I did not want this video to be as long as my tutorials usually are. So if you want to see all the products that I've already applied, they'll all be listed in the description box as always. So the first thing that I'm going to apply though is the new highlighter I picked up. If you're subscribed to Tati, uh, Glam Life Guru, she was raving about this highlighter in the Wet n Wild Gothographic collection that just came out. And if you saw my last couple videos, you might remember seeing that I picked up some of the items from that collection. Well, I didn't get this. And after watching her video, I think her video was like uh, five under 10 or something like that. It was, you know, products that were inexpensive that she really loved. And I thought, darn it, you know, I saw that when, <laughs> when I went to the store and I didn't get it. So I went back and got it. And what it is, is it's a loose powder that's like a, a gold glitter. So I've already opened the package and I've done swatches and stuff, but I haven't actually used it on my face yet. So as you can see, this is going to get very messy. And um, so this is what I'm gonna start with. I'm gonna apply that with my Morphe M501 brush. And uh, yeah, let's, let's see how this goes. The reason why I didn't get this originally is loose powder is a little bit more difficult to work with and I thought that the gold might be too deep for my skin tone, but the more I look at it, the more I think I might be able to just barely pull it off. So I'm just gonna swirl my brush in the cap and just use what is in the cap. And I'm just gonna go right along the top of my cheekbones. Okay, I don't really see that that much. So let me move on to what is in here. There's quite a bit. Okay, that's better. Now I'm actually seeing where I can pick up the product here. And I'm gonna tap off the excess and just dust this right along. Oh, that's definitely not too dark for me. Yeah, sometimes you can't really tell by looking at something in the uh, packaging what it's going to look like on your face. I thought this was going to look really crazy, but it doesn't look crazy at all. Okay, <laughs> I think I better stop. <laughs> if I go outside, I bet it'd be a thousand times brighter. All right. 
right, so that's not too dark at all, and that seems to be really pretty, and uh, I like it. Okay, so let's move on now to the eye products. When I use this single eyeshadow that I was just talking about, I like to use a thick, heavy eyeshadow base. If you use something thin, like I normally use Urban Decay Primer Potion, but that's a very thin formula, so I need to use something heavy so that the glitter will stay in place and stick to where it's supposed to and so that I can blend the product better. So what I'm going to use is this Wet n Wild white paint pot that I picked up in the Halloween collection this year. If This was obviously limited edition because it was in the Halloween collection. So if you don't have this, I wanted to also recommend a substitute. The NYX Jumbo Eyeshadow Pencil in Milk is pretty much the same thing. The formula is so similar, except this is in the form of a stick and this is in a pot. So it doesn't really matter which one you use because they're almost the same thing. But since this is a Wet n Wild eyeshadow, I'm going to use the Wet n Wild uh, primer. So I'm just running my finger in the pot and you can see that's a really heavy white base. So I'm just gonna put that right on my eye and I'm also going to work that into the outside corner and work it up towards the crease. And I'm just going to take it in a little bit and now I'm going to very carefully go up towards the brow because I've already done my brows obviously that was another time saver there so I'm just patting this and blending okay so I have more or less a heavier concentration on the lid so I just worked up and it gets thinner as I go so I'm going to do the other eye off camera and be right back. Now I know some of you would prefer to use a makeup brush or a makeup sponge, but I really feel like this product will spread more evenly and you'll get a better finish, a uh, better canvas for the eyeshadow if you use your fingers because the heat from your body will help uh, blend it. So that's what I like to do, but you know, if you want to use a brush or a sponge or whatever it is that you use, go right ahead. I normally would use um, my finger for my eyeshadow base, but that's just me. Okay, so I am going to use the eyeshadow that I talked about, but I'm also going to use the new Wet n Wild Rose in the Air eyeshadow palette in conjunction with this eyeshadow. So that's what this looks like. And this gold right here, I'm going to use as my brow bone highlight. So I'm just going to apply a little bit of that with a MAC 239 brush. and just go right along the brow bone. I'm trying to be very careful here because I don't want to mess up my brows. This is supposed to be a waterproof product on my brows, but I, I did just do it, so it might not have fully set yet. And I'm also going to take a little bit of that product and I'm just going to go right in the inner corners, which is why 
I applied a little bit of the eyeshadow base in that area as well. Okay, now the next shade in this palette that I'm going to use is this bottom transition shade right there. I feel like um, that's going to be about the right color and tone for what I want to pair with this. So I'm just going to take some of that on a Wet n Wild P15 brush. I love these brushes by the way and I had purchased just this one online as a part as part of an order that I placed with Wet n Wild a few months ago. I thought they were going to be in stores to buy so I just bought the one to try out but I haven't seen them and I really hope that they do put them in stores because I do order online but I really prefer shopping in stores. There's just something about um, instant gratification. <laughs> so I'm just going to put my brush into that eyeshadow and you have to be pretty careful with these because they are these palettes are crazy pigmented so you want to just you don't want to swipe your brush in there you just want to dip it very carefully okay so I'm going to put some of that in the crease area I prefer to start slow and just add more as I go along. Just It's so much easier if you do it that way because if you start big you may not be able to blend out everything that you take on the brush. Okay, I know it looks really patchy right now and scary but we're going to blend that out. Okay, I'm going to need to grab a blending brush. Okay, so I just grabbed an e.l.f. e.l.f., yeah, sure, Wet n Wild. Sorry, Wet n Wild. Um, I just grabbed a Wet n Wild blending brush, and this is one of the white-handled ones, and these are such a bargain for a dollar, aren't they? I just can't even get over how nice they are for a dollar. So I'll blend that out a little bit. We can always go back and add more or blend it more or whatever we want to do later. So I'm gonna dip my brush into that shade again. To the other side. And then I'm going to switch brushes and go back to the blending brush. Okay, I'm gonna start with this and then move on to the lid eyeshadow, which is called Nude Comer. And I'm gonna put this on my eyelid and then, you know, maybe go back and add a little more. Maybe use another color. Alright, so for all you people that don't like to use your fingers, sorry, but that is the absolute best way to apply this. So I'm just gonna take my ring finger and swirl it in the product. That's what it's going to look like on the finger. And I don't know if that would apply that well with a brush. Because again, I feel like the warmth from your body is definitely helping with the distribution of the the glitter and the base gel that is in there so that does make a difference some products just apply better with your hands
This is one of them. Right now, I'm just going to put a little more on each eye, and this time I'm going to like tap it, and that's just going to distribute just a little bit more of that glitter factor there. Okay, so once the eyeliner and the mascara and everything is on, um, I would also drag some color down along the lower lash line, and it looks it looks nice in person. <laughs> um, I feel like it could use a little bit more um, shimmer, shine, and so I'm going to go back to my 239 brush from MAC, flip that over, take the gold shade in the palette, and I'm gonna pop a little bit of that over this. And this is just gonna make this a lighter shade of gold and it's going to amp up the shine factor. So if you use if you use Nudecomer by itself, it's not going to be as much of a wham in your face glitter factor. Like when you look at this in the pan, it looks like it would be, but it's more of a subtle type of thing. So I, I kind of like it better with the other gold layered over it. Okay, now as far as the crease goes, I want to take this side up just a little bit to make it more symmetrical with the other side. So very carefully, just barely touching my brush into the eyeshadow and make sure I get the right side down. Just going to dab a little bit more there and then right through here is kind of an empty space. Maybe I'll just put a tiny bit more on this side as well. Okay, that's about even. Now what I like to do is just take um, a tiny bit more and just put some right on the outside edge of my lid and blend it right into that corner there.
Okay, now I'm going to take a small pencil brush and I'm going to drag some down along the lower lash line. And I'm going to apply my eyeliner and mascara off camera. Unbelievable the difference that eyeliner and mascara makes, isn't it? Um, I just wanted to say that the gel eyeliner that I showed you in a recent haul video by Clean Color, Clean Color Smoke and Gel Gel Eyeliner, and this is the one in Smoky Black, I've been really enjoying this. And I got the gel and the brush for only two dollars so if you have access to clean color at any of the beauty supply stores near you um, you might want to give it a shot or if you're going to place an online order at a site that sells clean color this is really really nice I have this on um, on my lower lash line and I also have it on my upper waterline or tight line so really good and then the mascara is the Benefit Bad Gal Bang. I I know it's a you know a little expensive, but boy is it worth it. Okay, so all that's left is lips. I really was agonizing over what color to use on my lips, and hopefully I made the right choice. Um, I'm gonna start with the Wet n Wild Perfect Pout Gel Lip Liner in Bare to comment. This is my most used lip liner right now of everything that I own. I reach for this over and over again because it just goes with so many different lipsticks. I'm going to line and fill in my lips and you'll see why when you see what lipstick I decided to use. So I use the end part, the pointed part, to line my lips and now I'm going to turn it at an angle and sort of shade on the using the side of the pencil to fill in my lips. This is such an improvement over their old formula. The other ones lasted a long time, but they were very dry. Okay, so the lipstick I'm going to use, I've recently purchased all of the Wet n Wild Silk Finish lipsticks. They're like 99 cents depending on where you buy them. This is in the shade 531C Breeze. The formula on these is so nice and I had recently purged a bunch of my lipsticks, a ton of them. And because of age and so I felt as if there were a lot of colors that I was missing and I thought a good way to fill that gap would be to buy these. I mean I'll still buy other lip products from time to time but this was just going to fill in that gap of the colors that I was missing by purging the ones that I purged. So I showed you some of the ones that I had gotten already in a haul video and then I'll show you the rest of them in the next haul video that I do. So this is Breeze, and this is kind of an unusual color. On the surface, it might just look like a nude, but it's not. It's got a definite uh, copper sheen to it, so I'm going to apply that over the lip liner that I just put on.
Silk Finish is a great name for these lipsticks because they are very silky. And Wet n Wild added a few new shades to the line. And so you might not see, see those in stores just yet. But um, no, actually, yeah, they are in stores because I just picked up the new shades. So I'll be showing you the new shades when I show, do my next haul. So yeah, that gives you like a coppery nude. I felt as if that tied in well with the tone and color that uh, I did with the eyes. So I like that selection. Sometimes when you're trying to decide what lipstick to use, um, it seems good in theory, but then you put it on and it's like, no, this doesn't go with that. But I feel like this lipstick really complements that eye color. So that is it for today, you guys. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. And if you're not subscribed already, please do so. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. You know the drill. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.